The first batch of Tesla's electric semi-trucks are rolling out for delivery to Frito-Lay in California, and this is something that has been a long time coming. Of the many delayed projects at Tesla, the semi has been the longest suffering of them all at three years overdue. And in that time, the industry has come a long way. There are a handful of other battery electric semi-trucks that have hit the road from other manufacturers, but none of them can hold a candle to the Tesla Semi. It's not even close. So why is that? How is Tesla able to enter a new market segment and instantly dominate with a vehicle design that is already six years old before it even made its first delivery? Let's talk about what makes the Tesla Semi so special. The design of the Tesla Semi is a feat of engineering genius. I know it looks more or less like a regular semi truck, the differences are subtle, but they give Tesla a significant leg up on the competition. I'd wager that the actual reason Tesla debuted their design prototype so early, so far ahead of their actual production capability, that was essentially to call first dibs on this particular design, making sure everyone knows that they are the original, not the imitator. So basically what Tesla is doing with their semi is taking the best of both worlds from American and European heavy trucking design language and fusing that into one truck. And then they are using all of the advantages offered by electrifying the platform and ending up with the perfect semi truck. We've got to first appreciate the old school construction methods for our existing heavy trucks so that we know the basics. For those of us in North America, we have the iconic long nosed transport truck. These put the massive diesel engine in front of the driver and that allows for a large cabin with room behind the driver that they use for a living space. This style of truck is going to have a wheelbase length of around 20 feet or more. There is no limit in the United States on how long the tractor section of the truck can be. The European and Asian markets have adopted a heavy truck design that is almost perfectly flat at the front. They accomplish this by putting the engine underneath the driver. That probably makes for a rougher ride and a more cramped space, but it does give the driver a much wider and unoccluded field of view out of the front. There's also typically no living space in the back of a Euro truck cabin. They just don't do the same style of long haul driving that we rely on in North America. This flat faced design is also largely to accommodate European regulations and road conditions. These trucks are usually much shorter with a wheelbase of around 10 feet. Two reasons for that. Number one, European roads are on average much narrower than American roads, and the trucks require a sharper turning radius to get around. Number two, the maximum allowable length for a Euro transport truck and trailer is just 61 feet from nose to tail, so they need a short cab to maximize trailer space. So going back to the Tesla, it does have a general appearance that's closer to the American truck because the front end is pointed and not flat. But because there is no diesel engine, the driver's position is moved right up to the front, like in the Euro truck. And Tesla has enhanced visibility and field of view even further by placing the driver dead center of the vehicle. Pushing the driver forward into the nose of the vehicle also opens up more space in the interior of the cabin. We haven't seen an official sleeper configuration for the back of the semi cabin, not that these are really going to be doing long haul runs on batteries anyways, but it looks like there should be a nice amount of space back there for the driver to utilize. It at least won't be claustrophobic. Also wanted to give a quick shout out to our amazing Discord community. Here is our question of the week, and this was our favorite answer. And here is the meme of the week winner. Join our Discord community to participate next week through the link in the description below. Tesla has yet to release the exact wheelbase length of the semi, but educated guesses put it at around 13 feet. That means Tesla has been able to fit all of the cabin space and comfort necessary for American long haul trucking into a footprint that is just slightly larger than the compact European truck. The Ford F-150 XLT has a wheelbase of around 12 feet, so the Tesla Semi should be very nearly as maneuverable as your average pickup truck. 
Elon Musk says that it handles like a sports car. Now, I doubt that is true, but it definitely should handle amazingly well for a vehicle of that size. Now, all of these design choices that Tesla has made are possible because this is an electric truck. They are capitalizing on the space saved by removing the diesel engine, which would make perfect sense to do, but apparently not for the rest of the electric trucking industry. So if we look at the competition that has been stacking up against the Tesla Semi over the past couple of years, we have a few key players. There is the Freightliner E-Cascadia from the Daimler Group, the Volvo FH Electric, and the Nikola TRE. These are all battery electric class 8 trucks, just like the Tesla. What's interesting about all of these competitors is that they choose to design their trucks to look exactly the same as legacy diesel trucks. The Freightliner takes the American long nose cab design, while the Volvo and the Nikola use the European flat face cab. Where Tesla used their first principles philosophy to build an electric truck from the ground up to be the best design possible, everyone else just took an existing truck design and threw electric stuff into it. And the results speak for themselves. The E-Cascadia is advertised at 230 miles of range, the Volvo FH Electric at 187 miles, and the Nikola TRE, the closest competitor with a very respectable 330 miles of range. But none of them are really holding a candle to the Tesla, which Elon Musk has promised will deliver 500 miles of driving range with cargo on level ground. Some of this difference is going to be attributed to battery and drivetrain technology, but a lot of it also comes down to aerodynamics, especially with such a large vehicle. And this is an area, again, where Tesla's first principle design gives them a major leg up. So the American long nose semi truck can be reasonably good at cutting the air. The more modern designs get down to around a 0.5 drag coefficient, but the flat-faced Euro truck, unsurprisingly, has the aerodynamic characteristics of a cinder block, and they can rate as high as 0.9 on the drag scale. For the semi, Tesla is claiming a drag coefficient of just 0.36, which is incredibly slippery for a vehicle of that size and function. It's in the ballpark of your average sports car. The most aerodynamic vehicles on the consumer market right now, the Tesla Model S and Lucid Air, are down around a 0.2 drag coefficient. Why Tesla is the only manufacturer taking full advantage of their electric truck platform? I couldn't tell you. Doesn't seem to make much sense, but this does play into the reasons why Tesla has spent so much energy and money building their own semi. Because anything worth doing is worth doing right. And if you want something done right, and sometimes you just gotta do it yourself. The goal at Tesla is to accelerate the transition of the world to sustainable energy. Heavy trucking is a key part of that transition, and it will never happen properly with all of these inferior designs that are on the market right now. I love cooking at home, especially with how much eating at restaurants is costing these days. Your most important tool in the kitchen is a sharp, high-quality knife, which is why we're excited to work with Kami Koto again on the channel. Kamikoto high-quality Japanese steel knives only use steel sourced from mills in Japan, and each knife comes in a heavy-duty ash wood box. The holidays are just around the corner, and this makes for a great gift. Using a sharp blade helps prevent cuts from a dull blade slipping on food, and it makes it faster to prepare food. You'll save time in the kitchen and help keep your fingers safe. Each blade is crafted using traditional techniques that have been honed and perfected through a rigorous 19-step process that takes several years from start to finish to complete. Every knife is individually inspected and comes with a lifetime guarantee, and the knives are used by Michelin star chefs all over the world. They have a lot of options, but the Kanpeki knife set includes a vegetable knife, a slicing knife, and a utility knife handy for most of the work needed in the kitchen. Kamikoto has several special offers going on right now and is offering our viewers an extra $50 off on any purchase with the discount code TESLA50. Go to kamikoto.com slash TESLA50 to get your Kamikoto Japanese steel knives today. Obviously, a large part of what gives the Tesla its performance is the battery, the electronic architecture, and the powertrain. 
And as far as we know, the system that drives the Tesla Semi is not so different from what they use on their consumer vehicles. Elon Musk confirmed recently that the Semi does not use the new 4680 battery cell, which means that they are likely running the 2170 Panasonic cell produced at Giga Nevada. This is very smart. While the 4680 cell does have a lot of future potential to become a very high performing battery cell, we know that it is not at that level yet with the design that Tesla has been shipping so far this year. We know that earlier this year, Sandy Monroe and his team ripped apart a brand new Model Y from Giga Texas and extracted the 4680 cells to sell them off as a charity fundraiser. The YouTube channel Limiting Factor purchased one of those cells and then sent it off for a detailed analysis. What he found was that the volumetric energy density, or the watt hours of energy storage per kilogram of battery weight, is actually lower in the 4680 cell than the 2170. The 4680 holds 244 watt hours of energy per kilogram of weight, while the Panasonic 2170 holds 269 watt hours. So, in order to fit the largest amount of energy storage possible into a given space, in the case the underbody of a semi-truck, the 2170 cell is a superior choice to the 4680 in its current format. The 2170 is also much more readily available in high quantities than the 4680 right now, and as you can see from the size of the Tesla Semi, it can fit a very large amount of batteries in there, at least 10 times the amount of a Tesla passenger vehicle. We also shouldn't discount the idea that Tesla is actually using their older 18650 battery cell for the Semi. These are the same batteries that power the Model S and Model X, and they actually have the highest density of any cell that Tesla currently uses, around 280 watt hours per kilogram. That's a lot of the reason why Tesla is stuck with this cell even when they refreshed their Model S and X in 2021 and added the three motor Plaid powertrain. These little batteries pack the most energy and power output for their size. They're also very easy to keep cool. One of the biggest advantages to the Model S Plaid is that it can run at full throttle for extended periods of time without overheating the battery pack or needing to do any kind of thermal throttling. These batteries can also take on charge very quickly. The Model S Plaid can recharge its 100 kilowatt hour battery pack from 10 to 80% in less than 25 minutes at a V3 supercharger with 250 kilowatts of power. So again, we don't know right now, but there's a case to be made that the 18650 might actually be the best battery cell for the Tesla Semi, for now at least. Speaking of charging time, this is the other major advantage that Tesla is able to pull out of their sleeve. Not only can their Semi go much farther on a single charge, but it can also gain that energy back much more quickly. So that E-Cascadia with 230 miles of range can gain back 80% charge in 90 minutes, which is decent. The Volvo FH Electric is advertising 2.5 hours for a full charge back to its 187 miles of range. That's not as good. And Nikola TRE is saying 160 minutes for 80% of its 330 mile range while the Tesla Semi is claiming 70% recharge of a 500 mile range in just 30 minutes. 70% of 500 is 350, so we're talking about gaining roughly the total energy of the Nikola battery pack in less than one-fifth of the charging time it takes the Nikola to reach 80%. A lot of this is because trucks like the Nikola use the standard CCS charging connector, the same charge port that most electric cars use worldwide. This charging standard has a maximum power output of 500 kilowatts, which is more than enough for your typical passenger vehicle, but it falls short of what's necessary for a massive commercial vehicle application, which is why it is absolutely critical that Tesla develop their own high capacity mega charger station, a more powerful version of their existing supercharger. Out of all the electric vehicle manufacturers, Tesla is the only one producing their own proprietary charging system, and they have years of experience doing this. The supercharger network recently reached its one decade anniversary, so they were already in a perfect position to design a custom charging station that would allow them to get the absolute peak performance out of their electric semi-truck. So 
kind of what we've been getting at here is that the real reason Tesla built their semi truck is because they are the only company in operation right now that could actually make this vehicle properly or make it function on the level that is actually required to begin transitioning heavy trucking from diesel to electric power. And that is the core to Tesla's mission as a company. What do you think is going to be the fate of the Tesla Semi? A revolutionary turning point in vehicle design or just a historic disappointment? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That is so important for getting our content out to more people. If you enjoy the content, then you'd probably also enjoy our weekly newsletter. So sign up with the link down below at theteslaspace.com. A huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters who are listed on the screen now. You help us make the best content we can, and we really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.